Brandon Dorney, Southern California real estate agent. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm just here with Marcos Palafox, my recent client. We just closed on your property in Corona. So thank you so much for that job. I appreciate you. Uh, Marcos is a retired police officer. How long have you been working with a police officer? 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. And you're retired now? Yes. And uh, how did we meet? Um, my daughter, I was looking for a realtor because the previous realtor that I had dropped the ball, wasn't doing his job. I needed some professional. And I turned to my daughter who knew you and recommended me to you. I took her word, my daughter is pretty sharp, she knows. What, what was it that you needed to be done differently with your new realtor? So tell me like what you're looking for new. I, I was looking for a professional realtor who knew what they were doing and the guy that I had before wasn't doing his job. He's been on the market for a while. So I, I had to get rid of him and get some, somebody who knew what they were doing. So uh, I took over the listing, uh, put new pictures on, new video on, uh, redid all the marketing. Um, and uh, before I took the job with you, I told you I will be happy to take the job. I'll be happy to give you a discount on selling this property. But first, I want an appraisal to be ordered. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And so the reason why I did that is because I didn't want to be arguing with you over the next three to six months over the purchase price of the property. Um, you were listed at 660. My personal analysis showed that the property was going to sell for more like 630 was what my number was getting at. And so I wanted to get the property appraised so we wouldn't have to argue every day about, oh, I think this property is listed too high. Oh, I think it's the, the property is justified. So I want to get that appraisal. What it come back at? 660. So we did not lower the price at all. We just switched up the marketing. Um, I hit the streets, did direct mail, door knocking. Um, we were not able to do open houses on this one because the tenant was in there and did not want to do open houses. Um, so I was spinning my wheels doing marketing. We didn't drop our price, so basically all the buyers that were in the market had already seen your home and had already seen the price and, and decided that they did not want to make an offer. And so I was kind of bugging you a little bit, let's, let's lower the price a little bit, let's lower the price a little bit. And thankfully, since you had a tenant the whole time paying your mortgage, you weren't really itching to lower the price too much, right. which was fine. Um, then coronavirus hits and the whole pandemic changes the whole real estate game. No more open houses. I wasn't doing them anyway, but no more open houses for anybody. Um, sellers are no longer putting their home on the market in the spring and summer. And so actually the coronavirus actually worked in our benefit in this case because we went through a housing shortage all of a sudden. In like March, April, May, home sellers weren't listing their homes on the market. And so now people were starting to look at our house again. And instead of going down the street for a little bit more square footage for the same price, they were coming back to us again to take a look at our property. Um, we were getting some low offers. We finally lowered the price a little bit and then we started getting some more activity. And finally we got an offer for, which we negotiated back and forth a little bit and we got it for 635. Then they asked us for a list of repairs. The, the roof had a bunch of cracked tiles. Uh, the AC system, there was something wrong with it. I think they wanted to like recharge it or, or upgrade it or something. Yeah, it was minor, but that's what they wanted. Yeah, so a couple minor repairs that the buyer was asking us to pay for. And so instead of doing all the repairs, scheduling all the people to come inside our house and potentially infect us and our tenants in the property, we just decided to discount the purchase price by a thousand bucks and deal with all the repairs themselves. So 634 out the door. Um, said and done. What did you think about the whole transaction? How did you think it went? It was great. I knew you, you know, I, uh, you had promised me when we, when we first started that uh, uh, you would keep me abreast of what situation, what was going on with the house. Uh, you uh, were constantly telling me anything that was going on. You were honest and uh, I was happy with it. And uh, I had no problem. I knew you were on your job. You were a professional. You, you were one of the easiest because you had your tenant in the property and so I would call you every couple of weeks, hey, what do you want to do? You want to lower the price? You want me to do some more marketing? And you're just like, eh, I'm all right with it. I know you're doing your job. I know you're marketing the property. We'll just wait till the summer comes and hopefully we'll get some more activity. And I knew when the summer came, that's when the, the that's when homes sell. Uh, coupled with the fact that there aren't too many homes out there for sale. Plus the fact that mine was a single story 
backed up, uh, you know, back, uh, backed up by a mountainside with a road. I, I knew it would sell for you. It would sell for you. Yeah, great property, 2,500 square feet, uh, single family. So yeah, everyone that, that doesn't want to do the stairs anymore and that wants to be in that nice neighborhood, we're looking yes. at your property. Right. Um, but yeah, I think the transaction went great. I, I obviously wanted it to happen faster for us. I think I've been working with you for almost about a year now. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously I would love to deliver a faster result to you. But, uh, you know, this is just how this one played out with coronavirus stopping everything for a month or two. Yeah. And, uh, you know, me taking on an old listing that had already had the same price for a long time. Overall, I was happy with the whole situation. You did a good job and I was I'm very satisfied with it. Thank you. And would you recommend me to anybody in the future? Affirmative. I'd recommend you to anybody who's selling their home. Oh, thank you. You're a true professional, my opinion. And I've, I've been a police officer for 25 years. I've, I've, con I've made contact with a lot of people, and you are, are on your job, in my opinion. Thank you, Marcos. Thank you. So, um, so what's something else that we learned about our deal that uh, we we're having trouble with? We uh, taxes was the main thing that we were having trouble with, right? We. Uh, when selling your home, if it's not your primary residence, you have to pay capital taxes. Gains, yes. Yeah, capital gains, capital taxes gains, on the profits. Yeah. yeah, I realize that, and that's what it, that's what the the state wants their money, and the IRS wants their money, and that I'm not going to argue with them. Freaking Uncle Sam, man, greedy Uncle right. Sam. Yeah. So the whole time, Marcos is asking me, like, you know, how much am I going to net on this property? You know, how much am I going to take away after all the expenses, after paying realtors, title, escrow fees? How much am I going to walk away with? And I kept referring him back to his tax guy. I'm sure that was annoying for you, but yeah. I kept saying, no, no, I'm no, not no, licensed. No, it wasn't annoying to me. I contacted him once and we had a good conversation and he explained to me, yes, uh, it's a possibility you're going you're gonna to have to pay capital gains. And so I put money aside for that. Nice, yeah, and so just one thing I want to give a lesson to everyone is like obviously you want to know exactly what you're paying for up front and that's what I can help you do. I'll help you figure out you know, how much taxes you have to pay as well. But again, I'm not licensed to give tax advice so I always push my clients to their CPA. Your CPA knows what you're doing, what your tax situation is like. He knows if this is your primary residence or an investment property. Yeah, so and this is the, hey, the, the first realtor that I had never even mentioned that to me, but this man did, and I got alerted to it that I'd never had this kind of situation before, and mm -hmm. I'm glad you did. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, uh, freaking Uncle Sam always has his hand out, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure everybody is aware of that, and I hate surprises, so I want to just make sure everything's up front and, right. and spoken about ahead of time, and you're not scared later or or upset later because you're not making as much as you thought you'd make, you know? So anyway, um, I appreciate you. I really appreciate the job. Thank you, Marie, for getting me the job. Um, thank you so much. Any last thoughts, anything? No, not really. I'm just a happy customer. That's all. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Thank you so much, Marco.